today was turns, right? So today uh, we only did turns. And I want to remind you that the basic structure of the turn and tango always is the following sequence. Forward cross, side step, backward cross, side step. Now, of course, one could do this in many combinations. Now, I did it at executive. We both did a forward cross at the same time. But she can do it without me doing anything. Or she can do a forward cross when I do a backward cross. Or she can do a forward cross when I do a side step. Right? So there are many different ways of doing this. The lady, when she turns, 90 times out of 100, she's always doing side step, forward cross, side step, back cross. If there's anything you have to remember, it's that, you know, by default. If the guy then can change it, he can make the lady do different things by using his body differently. Okay, so we worked on this exercise, which you can do in both directions. The more you work on this, the easier it gets. We can, of course, reverse direction. Right? Then we actually work on just to introduce the notion that we can actually change direction at any time. Right? I'm going to make it do a forward cross now. Forward cross, side step. See, I'm actually turning in this direction back, at any given time I can change direction, and of course I can change direction on every step. This is the nature of improvisation. At any given time, the guy has got nine possibilities. Uh, he's got three possibilities. He can either do a side step, or he can do a forward cross, or he can do a backward cross, or he can step in place. Right? So really, the 16 combinations. Right? So for instance, here, she's doing the turn, I'm stepping in place. Now I'm deciding to do the turn in my own way. Okay, so I've got four possibilities. The lady theoretically has got four possibilities on every step, which means four times four, 16. On every step, there are 16 possibilities. And in fact, it's even more if you allow the lady to lift her leg and do various other things. Okay, so 16 possibilities on every step. So obviously what we're doing now is teaching you, making you aware of these different possibilities through exercises and training your body. Okay, so I want to point out that in tango, you're typically walking counterclockwise and there might be somebody in front of you. So you might be doing this turn or some other turn, and then you notice some space, and then you can actually get out and do this fundamental sequence the basic sequence that we've learned. Okay, so we, I taught you this particular sequence. We both do a forward cross. We both do a side step. I make the lady do a backward cross while I place myself on the left foot. And I make a cross. You notice I leave my foot back. And then I end it. Okay, so I'll do it again. Forward, side. I should start uh, this way so we can actually see the right. Forward, side, step. Now to make this work, you have to make 100% sure that you get your full weight on the foot you're stepping on. That means your other leg is free. So when I'm first stepping here, I'm fully on my left foot. So my right foot is free. Now we both take a side step. Now my left foot is free, which means I can move my left foot next to the right foot. I go over, and then I end the step however I want. I mean, you can do whatever you want. Right? There are a million ways of doing this turn and exiting back into the fundamental sequence. Okay? And that's just a matter of exploration. The more you do this, the more you're going to come up with your own way of doing things. Tango becomes very individualistic. So the last thing I want to do is simply have you memorize the, my favorite sequences. Otherwise, I'm just going to create a bunch of clones. And ultimately, what you really want to do is learn to dance, and everybody looks different. But you really want to be comfortable with the dance and understand it. But that's the objective. OK?
Okay, that's it for today.